Hey. Go see Chuck Norris? Yes, let's go see him. Let's go. All right, let's go. So what is it with Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris is an American hero if you look back at it. Chuck Norris, he was a Marine. Okay. So he served in the armed forces. And if you watch all the Walker, Texas Ranger shows, it was always clean. It was family friendly. Even when they shot somebody, they never showed the blood and guts like most of these shows today. He is a he's an icon in the in the show deal for, for good people. I see. I think he has a charity now for kids or something too. He gives he charities for kids. Uh, he's got a new water company out right now, but oh, yeah. the man has done a lot for children. Plus he's a Republican, so I like him even more. And he lives around here. And he lives right down the street about a mile and a half. <laughs> and I've stopped at his house a couple of times. So how long have you and Cindy been have long friends? We got started in 1995. And what we were doing is we were just trying to figure out. We had a small piece of property. We wanted something different. You know, I raised, uh, I grew up raising uh, Angus and crossbreds. And I showed cattle when I was a kid. My grandfather had a 100,000 acre ranch that we used to go to once a month. And so I was always around the animals, always loved them. Cindy fell in love with them and we wanted something a little bit different than whatever our neighbors had. Our neighbors had black animals and black animals make more black animals. So we wanted something different. So we went looking for two longhorn steers. Okay. We ended up buying four cows and a young bull and it took us 10 years before we ever got a steer. <laughs> so why were you looking for steers in the beginning? The steers, we just wanted something to, to show in our front pastures, make them look pretty, have big horns. Our neighbor had a couple steers that had real nice horns. So we just wanted something for a yard ornament, to eat our grass, and look pretty. Instead, the Charlene Simpkin is the first person that we ever ran up against. And Charlene talked to Cindy buying some cows because she says, you're going to love the babies. And when we seen the babies, we were hooked. That was it. That was it. We were hooked. Our oldest cow, her name was, uh, she just died this last year. And she was 22 years old and she was making babies up until she was 20. And she had a better udder than 90% of the cows in the breed today. Who was that? For the life of me, I can't remember her name. You know, when you get a little older, as, as I'm getting older and just getting out of prison, you know, sometimes I forget stuff. <laughs> so you guys have really good cattle. What was the turning point in your program? Bob Loomis, if you ever talk to Bob Loomis, Bob Loomis is number one. And Bob has always, he always told me for years and years, you got to have bull power. You can have great cows in the breed, but if you don't have bull power behind it, you're never going to go anywhere. Bob was always helpful. He always helped us with our cattle. We went out and bought a, an older bull named Tabasco, and he was kind of one of the big turns in our life because, for one, he had a name behind him, and he was a good producer. And then years later, we bought, we ran into a, a, a gentleman that we bought a, a cow named Ringadinger, and she was a little skinny two-year-old heifer. She had a ton of horn, but we looked at her, and we fell in love with her, and she just jump-started the heck out of her program. Because you have three different families. We have three right. strong families, very strong families. And what we look at is you don't have your favorite cow. You have a family of cows that not only are their daughters good, but their granddaughters are good, their great-granddaughters. <coughs> and also that they can produce a bull and a bull that somebody else may want to buy or a bull that you use. Ringadinger is in our line in the female side plus in the bull side. We've got another family, uh, goes back to Rutledge's Miss Dixie. We've got probably 25 head of her family just in our herd. And then another, uh, Cooper 167, she's an older cow, but same thing, we've probably got 15 head just of her offspring in our herd. That tells you that they're good producers. No matter who you breed them to, they will produce. Right, and how many do you, head do you have right now? We run about 250 head, uh, more than what we like. I wish we could get down to a point where uh, maybe 150 head would be a nice number where you don't have to worry about your hay cutting and worry about your feed every year. Okay. But 250 is a good number. So how do you determine which animal you're going to consign to a sale and which you're going to you want to sell private treaty? 
in all reality, we'd all love to sell everything out of private treaty. You know, private treaty, then you don't have to pay a commission, you don't have to pay a sale amount. But if you don't do sales, what happens in if you don't do sales, people need to see your animals out there in the public. If you were to, if you always try to sell your low-end cows, people are going to get to a point where the, all they think you have is low-end cows. Right. So you have to pick good ones and sometimes a medium-sized animal. And what I might think is a mediocre animal, somebody else might think that's the top of the line to them. Right. So what do you? What's your full-time job outside of Longhorns? Uh, went into construction business back right out of high school didn't have m enough money to go to college okay. So I started in construction making two hundred two dollars and fifty cents an hour I was okay. making some big bucks the first week. I got a 50 cent raise and I bought a round for booze for everybody I was 18 years old and uh, Went from there. I started my own construction company in 1982 and I've had it since 1982 right now that's probably my full-time job, but uh thinking about it's getting time that I'd like to spend more time on the ranch. Slow down. And that's in Arizona. Yes, it's in right outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we've had anywhere from two or three employees to 300 employees. We did business all over Phoenix area and Tucson and we still do. We still have the business running. Uh, I've got two older sons that uh, both work at the company and they're doing a fine job. So why did you pick Arizona? Uh, born and raised. My grandfather and on both sides moved there in the early 1900s okay. and so they grew up in Chandler. In Chandler, Arizona, my grandfather went to high school in Chandler. My parents did, I did, and my kids went to Chandler High. We all graduated from that really? same high school. My grandfather had a ranch and uh, some of his roping buddies back in the old days was uh, the actor named Ben Johnson and John Wayne. They used to come to his place and rope. Really? Ben Johnson was the cowboy. John Wayne was an actor and he liked to be a cowboy. But John Wayne was, Ben Johnson was a heck of a man. So are your kids involved with the Longhorns? Ellie and Jace both showed animals for years. They showed until they aged out. And our kids have showed at Autobahn for years and at the World Show. The last year our daughter Ellie showed, she won every show. We took her to 22 shows and I think 20 she was grand champion and she won Autobahn and the World Show that year. And her son Jace, he's done doing uh, cow shows and he's in the uh, Navy right now and he's in Connecticut. I'm gonna play a little game with you. Okay. Okay. I want you to name 10 breeders outside of Texas and Oklahoma in 30 seconds. 10 breeders? Yeah. G and G Longhorns. Uh, Jimmy Jones, Terry King, uh, um, the Tomies, uh, uh, Mike Bowman, uh, Debbie Bowman, uh, Todd McKnight, Maytal uh, from Colorado, uh, Bob Larson. Bob Larson's a great guy. Right. Always smiling, always happy. There you go, you got 10. Perfect. You passed. All right, so this next thing we do is called rapid fire <coughs> questions. The first thing that you think of, say that, that's the answer. It's okay. kind of scary with you. Okay. Got it? Ready? No cursing. No okay. cursing. Nope. Uh, your comfort food. My comfort food? Yeah. Uh, ice cold beer. <laughs> if you could have any superpower, what would it be? see the future. Uh, morning person or night owl? Very morning person. Cindy is just the opposite. I'm a morning person. Uh, pet peeve? Uh, like I'm a neat freak. I like things in order. Okay. Uh, your hidden talent? Funny. Okay. Favorite TV show? Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> Alright, so we'll end this with, um, is there any advice that you want to give to breeders, whether they're new or they've been in it for a while? Do your study and make sure you study. Study the breed, study the breeders. Uh, find a good breeder that's going to help you out and there is a ton of them out there. Uh, don't go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff right off the bat. Find something that you like, buy it and sit on it for a while. Take your time. Make sure that you just don't go out and buy because 
so many people in this breed will go out and buy 10 or 20 head and then all of a sudden they sell all 10 or 20 head and then they got to start all over best thing to do is just wait it out go to sales go to shows and talk to a lot of people